Some of the biggest books and movies aimed at young people in recent years have been rooted in fantasy. Think Twilight, Harry Potter, and The Hunger Games. But a popular young adult novel that hit the big screen this summer deals with a hard truth of real life. Look at the cars. They're like... <sighs> You two are so adorable. We're just friends. Well, she is. I I'm not. The Fault in Our Stars tells the story of a teenage girl with cancer who falls in love with a boy she meets at a support group. It's fiction, but was inspired by the true story of a girl from Massachusetts. WGBH News arts editor Jared Bowen has more. Thanks, Adam. Lori Earl, your daughter Esther, while not the basis of The Fault in Our Stars, both the film and the, the book, the original book, she did influence that character, Hazel, in, in that film. So I, I'm wondering, who was your daughter? Because she, especially when she had the cancer diagnosis, because she is somebody who really drew the world around her, including the author John Green of Fault in, The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, it's amazing us still, um, the, like, the continued influence that, sh that Esther's having. I mean, amazing us in one way, but then she was pretty amazing, so, um, I guess we're not, like, surprised, but her influence has reached far beyond what we ever thought. So, but she was, um, you know, she met John Green through a Harry Potter convention, uh, conference. And they just, you know, she was pretty noticeable. She was dragging an oxygen tank and had a red wig on and, you know, just kind of caught his attention. And she was a huge fan of his. She had read all his books. And um, she has a video. Uh, she had a YouTube channel. And she has a, a video that she made afterwards fangirling over John, you know. And just Well, she had such a presence on camera. I've seen a lot of the videos that she made. I mean, she was very, very funny. Uh, what was it about her personality that... that did that really help her when she got the diagnosis in terms of surviving this as much as she did? I think I think it did. I think um, you know she's been called empathetic. She's been called snarky. She's she called herself um, angsty sometimes. Um, she had a real self awareness um, from the time she was really little. She was very self aware. Um, didn't pull punches. She was honest, but not ever offensively or blunt, you know, I mean, she had that good combination. Sometimes you can be honest and offend people, but she, she just, I don't know, that self-awareness did really, really help her um, because getting a diagnosis of cancer when you're 12 and then finding out, you know, in the next year when we came back to Boston and she got a second opinion at Children's Hospital and finding out it was terminal. Um, she writes about it in her journal um, and she... Yeah, that's, that's pretty heavy stuff when you're 12 years old, 13 years old, to, to think about. What drew in people the way that they, you just came back from um, Esther Day, uh, which was just a so couple exciting. of days ago, when <laughs> you know every, all of her fans still celebrate her and they celebrate love. What is it about her that has drawn so many people in a very particular area, you know, a lot of people through the internet and, and people her age, do you, have you figured out what the through line is that draws them to her still? I, I haven't figured it out exactly, except that she um, she's so approachable. So she's honest and empathetic, and she's approachable, and people identify with her. The, the, probably one of the comments we get most often from people is when I watch her movies, when I read her book, when I think about, you know, I hear about her online and stuff, um, she just feels like she would have been a best friend. Hmm. And so she had that quality in her that was able to be honest, and normal, you know, she, when she wrote this book that we have, um, her book is her journals mostly, and she didn't write it to show what it's like to be sick. She just wrote because she loved to write. She has a quote where she says, um, she says, if I could have three talents, um, and she writes about it in her, it's in her journals. She says, if I could have three talents, it would be to be able to reach inside of people and take out the cancer without hurting them. Mm. The second talent would be to dance, because she, with her oxygen, she couldn't dance a lot, um, although we were just with 5,000 people at the convention we were just at who were dancing for Esther Day, so that was pretty cool. And she says the third thing is words, and so she just knew the power of words. Um, and really, that's one of the things. I think she said things that other people feel, and so that's part of the identification, you know. What I've been really struck by in her story and your story is is when she received the diagnosis and knowing that the type of person she was that you just described, did your parenting change? Did it, did it become a different kind of relationship? 
I think that both, both my husband and I have always been really, um, we care about on we care about words a lot too. We're both teachers. We both teach uh, community college, and we care about. And my, you know, we write. So, honesty has always been really, really important to us. And so, one of the things we always did with Esther when she was sick was let her be super involved in the process because, you know, her involvement gave her a sense of control um, over something she couldn't really ultimately control. But it gave her as much power as she could, and power is. You know, knowledge is power. Being able to be involved in your healthcare process, I th and so I don't think that our parenting changed. Um, you know, we tag teamed a lot, and um, I, you know, we were just honest, and she was she was honest back and, and appreciated it. I think and respected us for that. I have been so struck to read that pediatric cancer doesn't receive as much attention mm -hmm. and funding and research and development as other diseases, uh, it's just shocking to me for some reason. Has that, it's, is that changing? It's, uh, I hope it's gonna change. I'm part of um, a group called Coalition Against Childhood Cancer. On September 21st, we're gonna be um, in the mall in Washington, D.C. for a day um, called uh, Cure Fest 2014. You can look it up online. And the goal is to bring awareness to childhood cancer. It's the number one um, disease that kills children. Um, you know, we've eradicated other diseases, but we haven't made enough inroads into childhood cancer, and especially the fact that we still use so many kinds of treatment plans that are decades old and a bit barbaric and archaic. So, yeah, I hope it's going to change. I hope it's going to change. Well, I just have to ask you quickly, you know, as I mentioned, the film is not really her story necessarily, but it's one thing to read the book, but what was it like to see the film, as I know you have, mm -hmm. and to see so a lot of the traits of your daughter on screen? Um, yeah, it was pretty surreal. Uh, we got to attend with our daughters um, the premiere in New York City, and I was so afraid I was going to break down. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to hold it together? And there are so many things in that movie and in the story that John wrote that's dedicated to Esther that um, feel like Esther, but then pretty soon I just get into the story, and it's a story about Hazel and Augustus and... Um, so yeah, there's a few points in it that get a little close to home, but it's you know it's a wonderful story, and and I think it's one of the things that's going to help to raise this awareness of, you know, how important it is for more research to go into childhood cancer. Well, I hope so, Lori uh, Earl. Thank you so much for coming. This star won't go out is Esther's journals, and then with this foundation, you do a fantastic thing raising money for to help families who are in the situation that you are in. Thank you so much for coming thank today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.